hello, hello. My AirPods away. Don't need these for the interim. Let me know if everything sounds okay, looks okay. I believe it looks okay. We'll see in a minute. Check this camera real quick. I really wish I could justify like a completely dedicated, never move it, flip a button streaming setup. I simply can't. So it's not something I do often enough to justify. Uh, send TikTok live. Just go live, TikTok. You're kind of the redheaded stepchild over here, so pop out your chat. All right, I can hide. Where'd the chat just go? Ah, oh, there it is. I want to move that so I can see the TikTok chat at least. Okay, I've got chats up here in front of me. All right, folks, so today we are unboxing the big one, the Chidi X-Max 3 uh, Take 2. This is the second time I've had one of these machines in the studio. So let's check camera angles real quick. Should be on angle number two right now. Back to the main angle. All right, I think we are good. We are ready. I got the big freaking box here behind me. Hello. No audio. Let me address TikTok audio real quick. Add more source. Uh, TikTok has no audio. Add microphone. Okay, TikTok, you ought to have audio now, I think. Seems like it's awfully quiet, but it's there. Let me know if you have it. Yep, okay, cool. Okay, folks, so we are unboxing the Chidi X-Max Take Two, uh, X-Max Three Take Two. I have one currently, the original one, the revision one, that um, the Chidi X-Max that had problems. It seemed like a promising machine, but it had problems. It simply did. And they've made updates. We'll discuss the updates. Maybe if we have time, maybe I'll pull the old machine up next to the new one and we can compare and contrast what they've updated. Uh, but I don't know if we're going to have time for that. So I'm still recovering from the, uh, the Rona, unfortunately. So I don't know how much I'll be able to do today, but let's at least get a machine unboxed, discuss the mach new machine, and we can go from there. All right, cool. So I got a big freaking heavy box. Let me know at any point if any issues are popping up as far as noise or something. I think we're good, but let's find out. Oh, yeah. This freaking thing. <laughs> Prash, welcome to the stream. Um, it's a big box. It's the big one. It almost didn't fit in my car. <laughs> yeah, the wide angle lens. The wide angle lens makes everything in this corner look really distorted. I see that. My hands, I look like alien. I have alien hands. Yeah. Uh, um, the lens is like really pretty close to me. So anyway. <laughs> This thing, it's funny because I can, they updated the packaging along with updating the machine. So the original iteration, uh, TikTok, let me move this a little bit. You can see here. The original iteration of this machine didn't fit in, or it fit in my car, no problem. This one, the updated packaging, uh, barely fit. It barely fit in my car. I actually had to like shove it because it hit the, the opening at the top of the, excuse me, at the top of the hatch. So here it is. I'm gonna end up taking this off of the bench because this is ridiculous. Like, this box is huge. So um, build volume on this machine, if you're not familiar, the Chidi X-Max 3, 325 by 325 by 315 on Z. So 
<coughs> excuse me, Core XY machine with a bigger build volume. We'll discuss specs a little bit more as we start getting things out. Oh, I realize now I'm hiding behind the camera. Sorry for the Rona Recovery Fund. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm I'm uh, I'm getting I'm getting better. Uh, definitely getting better, but I, I'm on the on the mend. But thank you very much. So it sucks because it screwed up our vacation we wanted to have last week. So let's get this thing out of the freaking box. Okay. Oh yeah, yay. Yeah. Me. I think I had a camera angle that'll be better for this on this camera. Vitamin C, D, and zinc. That's not a bad thought. Um, is this the angle I wanted? Let's go to this one. Yeah, this is the one I want. <coughs> Sorry if I cough in the microphone a little bit. I'm, I'm not used to wearing lav mics, but for this stream, I felt like it made a little more sense. Okay, hope you're well. Thank you, Make It Michael. Let's get this thing out of the freaking box. And get these corner protectors off of here first. So as I said, this is not my first go with this machine. They sent me the original one. I still have it. I've used it and I quite liked it, but it definitely had problems um, that needed updating. So this is the new updated version of it. And we'll discuss that as we go. They relied too heavily on plastic is basically the big thing for the original one. It's just such a large machine that it just, it wasn't working. The X Smart 3 supposedly works pretty well, but this thing being the X Max 3, I have a bunch of filament to pick up. Awesome. Have a good one. Thanks for being here. So we got a little accessory kit in the box here. Comes with a network cable, a high temperature hot end. The high temperature hot end, I believe, comes with um, an abrasive nozzle. It comes with two hot ends. So you get the basic hot end that's already pre-installed in the machine, and then you get the, eh, let me switch to move his camera a little bit. Then this updated one that has a uh, abrasive resistant nozzle, a wear resistant nozzle in it. Yeah, so it's got a ceramic heater element. Let me zoom that camera in as far as I can. I don't know if that's gonna be nearly enough. Eh, it's better. So it's very, 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 very reminiscent of a bamboo hot end. So what we're looking at is basically a bamboo hot end with a ceramic heater element of like a Rapido, a Fetus Rapido attached to the end of it. And uh, is this gonna be turned into a video later? No, but the live stream will be available afterward as a VOD. So the live stream will be available and comes with a wear resistant 0.4 millimeter nozzle out of the box. Oh, got to move the stream view on TikTok. Sorry, folks. Uh, there's rubber feet. Are the feet not pre-installed? Interesting. I guess to fit it in the box, they couldn't fit it with the feet on? I don't know. It comes with a little piece of paper for leveling for uh, Z offset setting. And a quick start guide. I'll keep that handy, but I don't think we're going to use it at the moment. And of course, some tools. And of course, some tools. Okay. Hi, Gene. Do you want to come hang out with the with the stream? You gonna come join stream, Gene? No. Should have waited for you before you unboxed yours. Eh. I took too long. This thing's, I, I, I joked that this thing was like, you know, just arrived, but it's actually been here for weeks. I just haven't had time to unbox it. More cardboard junk. 
Boom! Boom! <laughs> uh, now the fun of getting this thing out of the box. Come on! Anytime now! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, cat. Scared cat. Oh, that's an awful sound. Okay. God, this thing is big. It is a big cube. It's not nearly as heavy as, as like it could be. My Voron 2.4 is probably heavier. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wish I could just zoom out TikTok. Let's do that a bit. Sorry, TikTok, but you're going to get a zoomed view. How big is your 2.4? My 2.4 is a 300 millimeter version, uh, 300 millimeter build volume. But I would say the external dimensions of my 2.4 are very similar to this machine. Um, I would say they're strong. They're very similar. So you're very strong. Uh, okay, I'll take that. Actually, we brought this butcher block uh, top up from the basement for me to use as a table today, and I. I gripped it with one hand and picked it up just to get underneath of it. So I gripped it, got underneath of it, and Ruby looked at me and she's like, show off. <laughs> X rock climber, what do you want? Hi, cat. Okay, this is going to be noisy while I get this crap off of here. So... Let me move that camera angle again. Widen this lens out. All right. Now we can get this thing out of this packaging. Next time, slice all corners of the box. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. I get this. I I understand cling wrap, but boy do I hate it. Boy do I hate cling wrap such a pain and the exterior of this thing is plastic I don't want to scratch the hell out of it I like the aesthetics of this thing it is a strong aesthetic don't get me wrong like it's a choice the aesthetics of this are a choice but I like it oh sorry I meant to cut to this angle <laughs> How big is this? It is not Neptune Max big. It is 325 by 325 on X and Y um, and 315 on Z. Yes, it's $1099, $1,000, somewhere around there. Um, you're getting a lot of machining for that money. There are cheaper options, but there are, they're not, it's hard to say that there are machines in this class at this price. Because, I mean, we have, let's ooh, get some of this off of here and we'll discuss specs. Uh, get this crap out from under here. There we go. Okay. Oh, boy. This bag off of the lid. Does not support multi-material printing, no. Uh, this is a single material, there's no multi-material unit. But this is kind of, I think they're aiming, what they're aiming for with this machine is more of a, oh yeah? A, a um, industrial like engineering machine. So something like a, a prototype shop or an engineering shop might want more so. Uh, I don't think I only ever made MakerBot style. Yeah, their previous machines definitely had MakerBot influence. Uh, this one does not. This one has straight bamboo influence. Um, this is a Core XY machine. So it's got Core XY motion system. Um, uses the linear rod design. It's using tubes for the rods. So stainless steel tubes for the X rods, the gantry. And it's let me try and change camera angles again 
It's so big I have to keep moving to get like get a good view of this thing. Educational? I could see it in the educational market. I could definitely see it in the educational market. Um We don't have, we have a lot of money, don't know anything about technology market. Um sure, I guess, but the technology here is I really think you're getting a lot out of this machine for what the money is. Like what other Core XY 325 by 325 build volume machine is on the market at all, let alone at a thousand dollars. It's also got an active chamber heater, which nothing in this price category does. There is a PTC heater inside here to create an actively heated chamber for higher temperature printing. It's got it has input shaper tuning. It has a built-in accelerometer in the tool head. It runs Clipper firmware. Um, it's got an auxiliary part cooling fan. Um, a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, not ten thousand. No, 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 thousand. No, 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 no. Accessory kit. I think this is the spool holder. Yep, spool holder. One thing I don't like is the spool holders on the back. They say that you can do something about that, but I really don't know how. Um, yeah, so that, that's an option. Uh, now I've got to get snips to get... There's a whole bunch of zip ties inside of here. i got to get out. They zip tie it all up so it can't move around in transit. Does it have independent control Z? I don't know yet. Uh, the first model didn't. This one might. I don't know. We can tell real quick by flipping it over to look at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, nope. It is single single Z. There's a single Z motor. Wow. This is different than this is totally different than the original machine underneath. Um, the original machine's off side of the off the side. This is way different. So we've got a 450 watt power. We have two 450 watt power supplies. So I assume the PTC heater and the bed are probably both 24 volt. Um, yeah, 900 watts of power supply in this thing. It's got a single stepper motor for the Z axis, so it does not have independent Z control. Um, yeah, I mean, like compared to a Compared to a bamboo, effectively what you're looking at here is a bamboo without multi-material and with um, active chamber heating. You know, on my Bamboo X1, when I want to heat up the chamber, I've got to cook that thing for, you know, 20, 30 minutes, an hour to get it up to temperature, just heating up the bed, heating up the hot end. I run the auxiliary part cooling fan a little bit to circulate air, and the best I can hope for there the highest temperature I've ever seen on my, mind you, I've insulated my Bamboo X1 chamber. I've, you know, insulated the side panels, the top glass I have insulated. The best I've ever achieved is 50 degrees Celsius, maybe 51 on the inner chamber temperature. This machine can achieve 65 degrees Celsius with the um, PTC chamber heater that it has. Go away. <laughs> Siri always comes in when I'm doing a live stream. Uh, you need two whole different circuits if you are running 110 and 230 bed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess running 1000 watt heater run off mains. Yeah, my Voron uh, is a 1000 watt running on mains. This is, this is not, this is running 24 volts. It's a choice. I'm not saying it's a bad choice. It's a choice. So, okay. Uh, I don't know if I want to take off the back panel to get to the electronics. It doesn't really matter. I know the last one, I'm assuming, uh, you've seen 65 on your, on your bamboo chamber. You've hit 65? How? Are you in like a 100 degree shop? <laughs> Um, doesn't the Noctua fan affect your chamber temperature on my on my X1? No. Uh, 
Uh, I think the hot end and bed get hotter than the bamboo. Yes, this hot end and bed are rated for higher temperatures. Uh, yes, this is an MKS Pi uh, controlled by. Yes, that's where I was headed next. So inside of this thing is a maker base, uh, not a Robin Nano, what do they call the thing? It's got an onboard uh, Raspberry Pi effectively. Uh, does it have a filament cutter? Nope. There is no filament cutter on the hot end, on the tool head. I don't think they have any intentions of a multi-material system on this at all. I don't expect it. So, okay, let me grab some snips. I'll be right back. Don't know why I don't have any right at hand. Da 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 da. Where are snips? Let's just grab the Nipex. Knipex, whatever. Knipex. Alright, zip ties for the zip ties in here. Oh yeah, okay, so the chamber the chamber uh, heater has a rating on it. It's 24 volt, 300 watt for the chamber heater. Uh, it is not mainline clipper, no. It is a branch of clipper because the MKS Pi. Um, this board can't run mainline clipper, unfortunately. Same issue with the Seabor uh, V0 that I have. Unfortunately, this uh, this branch of clipper has to be separate because it's the problem with these different boards. It's one of the reasons the Raspberry Pi is so recommended and common is all these other um, uh, all these other machines, all these other main boards, <sighs> SBCs, all the other single board computers, they're not supported the same way by Linux distributions and whatever. So when they update Clipper, there could be something in a Clipper update that would break on this board, but not on a Raspberry Pi. And they can't really develop for every board on the market, so... Eh. MKS Skipper. Thank you. That's the board. MKS Skipper. Um, how loud is it? The one I have now, at, similar to my Voron, actually quieter than my Voron um, overall. I think the chamber design on this one kind of traps noise a little bit better than just the pure acrylic panels, I think. Um, so... Overall, pretty surprisingly quiet, but we'll get there and we'll see once it runs. It does have an auxiliary part cooling fan on the side over here, um, that like the, exactly like the one on the bamboo blowing across the bed for added part cooling when running like you know a speed benchy or whatever or PLA. For me, this machine, if you're buying this machine, you should probably be printing like ASA, ABS. You're not really, you shouldn't be buying this for um, uh, for the, uh, what do you call it, um, PLA printing. It's not really, I mean, don't get me wrong, it'll print PLA, but it's not what I would recommend buying this machine for. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What am I missing back here? Nathan builds robots, welcome, you're irrelevant. Oh well. It's okay, you make yourself rather relevant for being irrelevant. Does it have clipper screen? It has a variant of clipper screen. They have their own touchscreen interface on here, running clipper screen, but it has like its own interface setup. So you can go through like their own pre-set up macros and stuff. Um, they've got like their own macros. At least I'm basing off of the old X Max. I haven't run this one yet. Um, they have their own macros for like pre set up for like Z offset and stuff like that. And I actually like their implementation so far. Um, I haven't had a problem with it on the old one. I ran the previous X Max um, pretty, pretty often. I was running it pretty heavily. I, I featured it in one or two project videos um, where I just didn't really talk about it. So yeah. Uh, I think this is the size to get. I'm testing the X Plus right now. It's 280, 280. The 330 is pretty much class leading, but overall it's pretty great. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
I'm kind of of that opinion too. If you're gonna go from the X Smart, which the X Smart, their their small one, is what like two twenty by two twenty, and that's like four hundred dollars. If you're gonna go bigger, you might as well just go bigger. And this seems like a really good choice. Hmm. Uh, I'm not criticizing, just wondering. All 3D printers get gifted all these machines, right? This was sent to me. Yes, I'm at the point, I'm at the scale and the point where, yeah, most of the machines you see, I get sent. Um, actually, I'm going to be doing another unboxing stream. Are you on a 9mm lens? You look tiny. Yes, I actually am on a 9mm lens. <laughs> this is a 9mm lens, so that's why you see if my, uh, my hand looks alien over here in the corner. Um... So anyway, yeah, the uh, this was sent to me. I'm gonna be doing another unboxing probably Saturday. I haven't announced it yet, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do like a, a mega unboxing. I've got like various printers around here. I'm actually using the Creality K1 as a TV stand behind the camera right now where I'm reading the chat off of. Um, I haven't unboxed it yet. I've got so many, I've got various printers that I haven't unboxed. And I'm gonna do like a mega unboxing this weekend and just unbox everything I haven't had time to get to. Like the perspective with ultra wide. Cool. Ugh. Uh, not sure how toxic fumes are with ASA compared to ABS. They're basically the same. You are going to deal with the same, it doesn't smell as bad, but you do have the same fumes off of ASA that you get off of ABS. This supposedly has an internal charcoal filter to filter the air inside of it to cut down on those toxic fumes. Haven't confirmed that yet. I know the previous one said that it did and there was no filter element in it. It just had a fan, so I don't um, It's hilarious, you can tell the field of view. That is good eye, vast CNC, good spotting. You nailed the focal length exactly. So, all right, I gotta get these damn things out of here. Oh, okay. There is some screws inside of this thing I gotta get out that are holding the bed down. So let me switch cameras. Bloop. I'll get my LTT, custom LTT screwdriver. So new custom color I got at LTX last week. And I have this one, my nice custom colored one, loaded up with all metric hex bits for working on printers. Bam, all right, that seems to be the right size. All right, there's four screws, just like the bamboo going down into the bed uh, that I've got to get out of here. Um, I generally don't want a filter element to filter outside of the chamber. I would prefer one that circulates air inside of the machine because it helps to maintain chamber temperature that way. Like the bamboo X1, I don't like that the charcoal filter exhausts air out of the machine because it hurts the chamber temperature. Um, it keeps the chamber, it, it, it fights keeping the chamber temperature high, which is not what I want. So, uh, like my, my Voron, my Voron 2.4, I have a, um, uh, had issues connecting to fluid. Did you use the port number? Um, it should be pretty straightforward to connect to fluid. It was on the uh, the first revision of this machine I have. Um, what was I saying? Bamboo X1. Oh, uh, my Voron 2.4, I have a charcoal filter with the Nevermore, but it's a, uh, it's all internal. It just circulates air inside the chamber. Should really get the bento box for in-chamber filtration. Yeah, I've been meaning to put the bento box in my Voron, or not my Voron, my uh, my bamboo. I was designing my own version of a bento box, same concept. I was just designing my own, but I don't have time to keep designing all of my own stuff for every project. Jose, welcome. Hello. Um, so yeah, I just need to put a bento box in it. You're right, I do. Uh, I really, really do, because I mostly print ABS and ASA these days. So I should have a filter in there. Like the inside of my, like the glass and everything on the inside of mine gets kind of mucky. All right, zip ties out of here. 
There's like a cardboard wrapping around the hot end. Yeah, sadly, the sadly E3D stopped making the tool changer this week. They've announced no longer doing a tool changer. I'm sad about that. Possible to flip around the X1C and use a bento box? No, not really, because it would draw cool air in from outside. Um, I'm intending personally just to eliminate the X, the uh, chamber fan on the bamboo and wire. I got, um, I got uh, Sunon PWM fans, uh, blower fans for my bento box that I'm gonna use that, so I should be able to wire it. So the original fan control for the chamber fan on the Bamboo X1 will control the, the bento box and be able to adjust the fan speed properly and read um, accurate um, uh, numbers, like speed, RPM. John, welcome. This thing is huge, is huge. Um, Actually, the, the bento box probably would be a good idea in here too, because I'm looking at it and it definitely does exhaust outside of this thing. Uh, as far as I know, the X1 has a chamber temp sensor. It might make sense to leave it and spin it up just to reduce chamber temp. See, that's the problem though. I don't, I rarely need to reduce chamber temp um, on my X1. I actually would prefer to try and increase chamber temp most of the time on my X1. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. I don't know what we should do now. I might as well look at the manual and see if I'm missing anything. Too hot, no such thing. Hello, yep. Creatrix, Brit, Brute, welcome. Hello, welcome to the stream. Rain Motorsports, welcome to you as well. I, don't, I didn't see you comment before, so I'm assuming you just joined in. All right, my, I already checked the power supplies that they were flipped to the right setting when I was under it. And looks like we are about ready to power this thing on. I already removed those screws it told, it's telling me to remove. There's foam underneath the bed. Oh, there's actually a guide. Oh, wow. I don't remember this from the first one. There's, there's actually instructions that will be on the screen to tell us what we should remove. Um, if there are plastic bed supports on this printer, are you going to remove it just like proper printing? I don't know about plastic supports. Um, this is the updated version. This has a metal frame for the Z-axis now. The original one had a plastic frame at the bottom of the machine that would actually cause deflection. I think it was a, I don't know how to pronounce it, Clow, Clough, 42, or whatever, um, that I uh, mentioned found that issue. It would actually throw off the bed. And I was finding my original revision of this machine had that problem. I liked it, but I basically had to re-level the bed and reset the offset before every single print because the frame would flex so much that it would be different between every print. What are the dimensions of this compared to a... Yeah, Claw 42 showed, uh, showed that it, it would move as the bed heated up. Totally understand as the chamber temp rose, it would cause the entire frame to fluctuate in size. Uh, something around the bed unnecessary for printing. Don't know, we'll figure it out as we go. Um, if there is something cool, maybe I'll remove it, I don't know. All right, I got a power cord here. It's on a dedicated circuit because this thing can pull up to 900 watts. Well, let's power it on. Uh, let's see if I can move this so you can see the screen. There we go. I'm gonna zoom in the camera real quick. There we go. <coughs> uh, you like that they moved to steel rods over the carbon. Yeah, I agree. I like that too. I worry about the longevity of the carbon rods. I understand it, but I, I uh, 900 watt AC bed. No, it is running a 24 volt bed. It's got two 450 watt uh, power supplies in here, 24 volts. So it has a 24 volt, 300 watt chamber heater. And I believe the bed is 24, watt, uh, 24 volts. Screen's big. I think it's about a five inch screen. 
New printer, yes, this is the Chidi X Max 3. Alright, I gotta come around and select the language. Ba -ba -ba. English. Next. It's telling me there it's got a walkthrough right on the screen here. Let me move this camera angle a little more. Cool. Center this view up a little bit. Um, it's got a walkthrough on here telling you how to work on disassembly. I'm, I'm digging that. Like, so the, the instructions that I have here, they're also on the screen right now telling me what I need to do. 4.3 inch screen. Okay, yeah, that seems probably accurate. Yeah, that's smaller than a five inch. Remove all ties. I removed the ties, the screws. It's about to move the platform. All right, platform's moving up so I can get the foam out from underneath of it and the zip ties off of it. Moving, moving, moving. <laughs> I do like that even though I told a zombie hedgehog that screens don't matter. Like, don't get me wrong, screens are just nice to have. You don't need them on clipper machines, but they're nice to have. Like, I have them on all my machines at this point, and I'm not mad about it. Yeah. These big zip ties in here. Why are you stuck? <laughs> out of here. A couple pieces of foam in here. Oh wow. Yeah, the underside of this machine is way beefier than it used to be. Uh, use the foam as insulation on another machine? I don't know about that. This, this foam is like that really cheesy styrofoam. I wouldn't do that. Let me try to get in here to get this out of here okay all right we got a PEI flex sheet bed in here oh also let me uh, tilt this a little bit if I can show you I really like that they don't have a magnetic sheet on the bed I really dig that let me show you obviously chamber lighting and not a magnetic sheet on the bed, it has embedded neodymium magnets in the bed. So that is what it's using to hold the flex sheet down. Dig it. I dig that. Uh, did I send the old machine back? No, I still have the old machine. If we have time, maybe we'll compare them. They don't want the old machine back. I was trying to figure out what to do with the old machine. Like I'd like to, I'd like to donate it to somebody, but it, it's just, it's got just enough issues that I can't really, I can't give it to a makerspace or something. Um, Cause I'm worried it would just be too much of a hassle. What makes a magnet better than a magnetic sheet? Better thermal transfer and less, less inconsistency in the surface. Um, so you know your heat's going to travel through the build plate. Your treat, heat can go right through the build plate, right into the sh into the bed sheet, versus having to go through a magnet. Uh, keep the old machine for possible parts. Yeah, it's just so damn big. Is the problem? Like, think about it. I have two of these in here right now. <laughs> so, got to find a home for it, and I am I am out of space. Um, yeah. So there's that. Okay. Oh, calibration, so it's immediately gonna go into PID tuning. It's gonna want me to do a PID tune right away. That's great. Any alignment on the sheet? Yes, there are guides at the back edge of the bed, so you can you can stick it all the way in. Uh, there are alignment tabs back here, so you just stick it in, butt it up against it, drop it, and it lines up perfectly. All right, now I gotta do a bed PID tune. Cool. It's gonna preheat the bed to 70 degrees Celsius. Has a preheat uh, PID tune. And yeah, cool. Desperate need to peel that. <laughs> 
Use the old machine as a mutant build. Yeah. Um, I might try and see if I can fix the old machine. That might be a fun thing. If I can fix it, I could justify giving it to, like, a school or something. Um, uh, Gary Nichols over on TikTok. What's the... Um, what's the best 3D printer for around $700? That's a really loaded... Um, question. There's a lot of machines in that price point right now. I would probably look at something like the Bamboo P1S. It really depends on what you want, though, what you're trying to achieve. Uh, like temperature printing capabilities, or like, do you want something made in America? Like, there's so many options. Uh, yeah. If you want to send it here, I won't mind. I'll gladly make space. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Uh, the Ultimaker original I got out of Pennsylvania was the 12th printer, uh, but everyone likes it. Cool. I'm debating. I just saw Nero got that finally. I talked to Nero last year, and he was talking about getting one of those. Um, the Ultimaker. Siri, please stop. Um, he was talking about trying to find an Ultimaker original. I'm debating now. I've got that, that X-Tool laser cutter. I'm kind of tempted to build a Ultimaker original, like, fresh. Use my own laser cutter to cut out the panels and all of that and build an Ultimaker original, but, like, mod it right off the bat, probably, to a more modern machine. I don't know. Would that be something anybody would actually be interested in? Notice the custom LTX screwdriver. Yes, LTT screwdriver. Yep. Got this at LTX last week. Yeah, I swear, don't do it. Siri always thinks I'm talking to her during lives. Most of the time, it doesn't, all, like, if they provide the files. Yeah, the files are available. Really want to build a Positron. I really want to build a Positron as well. I've put a bug in Jason's ear. Um... Uh, Jason from LDO, when I told him whenever they have the kits dialed in, I really want to build a Positron. I'd be more interested in your designing a 3D printer using the laser cut fabrication. Cool. I could always take the concept and just build my own thing. I want to check. Alright, it's up to temperature. Alright, want to do a peel on this face? Let's do that while it's while it's working. Let's get this peel off of here. Looks like it's homing. Yeah, it's homing. Ha. Just make sure you use the AI files. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what? I don't think it's PID tuning. That's not what it was doing. I get it now. It wasn't PID tuning. What it was doing was heating up the bed to... Uh, does it really have a BL touch? Yes. That is probably the weakest thing on this machine. I don't understand that. They are running a BL touch in a heated chamber machine. Don't get it. Um... What it was doing is it heated the bed so that I can do Z offset while the bed's hot, as you should. So that's what it was doing. It just homed so I can do a Z offset. Camera angle change. All right. Let's dial in Z offset. Pretty good. Now it's going to do a bed level. 
Yeah, it is running a BL Touch. Absolutely, uh, absolutely the weakest link, I would say. Uh, the plastic probe is going to curl. Yeah. Bang Bang could make a comeback if it's fast enough. Yeah. I, you know, I've heard, like, uh, didn't Stefan do a video, like, last year about how something he was having trouble with, he kind of needed to go to Bang Bang to correct it? Ugh. Yeah. Running the BL Touch on this thing is absolutely... The one thing that I look at this and go, why did you do that? Everything else I can kind of understand. That one thing I'm kind of pretty iffy about. One thing I could say for sure, uh, haven't seen me in a while. Hello, welcome. Um, one thing I can say for sure, this machine is way quieter at idle than the previous one. The old one, the fan on the main board was annoyingly loud, like almost all the time. And that was, that was annoying. I know uh, Modbot, uh, Daniel, did a video about converting the fan to be temperature controlled. There is a USB port here at the top back, yes. Back here at the top, kind of annoying. Also, it has a rear mounted spool holder location. I hate that. I hate, hate, hate spools holders on the back. Where I have the machine right now, on the shell, on the, it's actually on the, the Rat Pink toolbox is where I have the original one. That's where this one will probably end up is uh, it, there's not a good place space behind it to put the spools back there. I don't like that. Rear mounted spool holders only only make sense in like a Prusa print farm, like where you can walk down the aisle behind the machines and change spool holders. Um, the rear spool holder is a dry box. Yes, it is a dry box. So, yeah. Let's get it out of the box. It is a dry box, yes. Oh, hey, it came with filament. The previous one did not come with filament. That's cool. I mean, it's a, like a 250 gram spool, but... And what is this? It doesn't even say what material it is. Uh, 220 degrees printing temperature. Oh, it's 500 grams. I'm gonna assume they're they're PLA, fast PLA probably. Yeah, there it is. Dry box. So yes, it is a dry box. That's a positive, absolutely. You can put a desk in, in the bottom of it and keep moisture down. Great. I just hate rear mounted spool holders. I really wish it had been on the side or I even wish, I kind of wish it had an internal. Um, um, I kind of wish it had an internal spool holder because it's a heated chamber. So like, why not? Yeah, silica. Comes with a silica pack to put into the bottom of here for a dry box. About to pull the trigger on my first printer. What do y'all think? Uh, Cobra Neo, Neptune 3 Pro, or Neptune 3, or Ender 3S1. Of those choices, I would go with the Neptune 3. I have not been impressed with the, like, Elegoo has been the most impressive company lately, in my opinion. Uh, as far as producing like decent quality machines at good price points. If those are your choices that you're presenting, the, that's the one I would go with. Spool out. We use this to do our test print. Oh, I did forget. They told me they really wanted me to do a firmware update on this machine. Out of the box. A little annoying. Let's be grab. Yeah. They were pretty insistent. They wanted me to update the firmware on this thing. Out of the box. Annoying, but especially on stream. I don't like having to do it on stream, but 
Yeah, internal is internal spool holder is inconvenient. What I really wish, if it was me, what I would do is have an external door that you could open up and change the filament, but it would still be internal to the machine. Um, that's what I would like to see personally. Like that way, it has the internal. Yeah, I they the the uh, information they provided definitely said it was going to take a while. So maybe. Maybe while the firmware updates, we can do a comparison between the old machine and the new one. We'll see. Okay. Hi, dog. All right, I forgot to... They also came out with a new slicer. Uh, they came out with a new slicer um, quite recently, and it's based on Prusa Slicer this time. Happy to see that. The last one was based on Cura, and I don't like Cura. So I was happy to see that they, that they did that. Okay, I gotta grab the firmware update information real quick. Alright, they want me to put the unzip this QD update onto the USB drive. Cool. Just wanted to be sure I knew that's what I was doing. Extract this. Onto here. Excuse me. Cool. Wouldn't the heat escape when you changed out the filament? Absolutely it would in that case. But like, I would consider that an okay trade-off to keep the spool constantly heated and dried in the chamber. That would be my thought process. I can understand why people wouldn't want that. Just the thought, I would like to see it. Um, it is actively heated chamber, so. It's not like it couldn't recover. Eject this USB stick. I can use this to update the firmware. Where have you been? I don't prior prioritize TikTok a whole lot anymore, unfortunately. When I do make content on TikTok, they don't show my videos to anybody, and I'm focused on YouTube. Um, way better stream on YouTube, folks, on TikTok. If you head over to youtube.com slash really. You'll get a better experience. The Bamboo X1 has to be the most expensive filament dryer. I mean, that's true. That is, uh, that seems accurate. Why is this not downloading? The slicer is taking forever to download. Google Drive, please speed up. Where are my downloads? Ah, no, it's that that annoying thing that Google keeps doing where it's constantly asking you, are you sure you want to install this? You sure you want to keep this thing you downloaded? Yes, I'm sure. Getting their slicer installed. They kind of merged their slicer, I'm pretty sure, with Orca slicer. Uh, Prusa slicer, I mean, with Orca slicer to give it a... Does Pooch have a rep box big enough for the X, uh, the Mark, uh, the X Max 3? I don't know. I'm going to have to ask him. That would be a great solution for this machine. I could really see loading up, since you're not doing multi-material on this, load up like a 2.5 kilogram, 2 kilogram spool of like ABS, you know, CF into this thing and you're set. Just pump out prints uh, or ASA CF. So they're keeping you safe. I know they're protecting me from myself. Um, have you tried step files in Bamboo Slicer? I do it all the time. Uh, I do step files in Bamboo Slicer. Prusa Slicer has that ability now. 
Um, you need a ladder. It's already, I'm six foot something, and where I put this thing, I'm six foot one. I knew how tall I am. Um, where I put this thing in the studio, it's kind of hard to reach in the top of it. I actually end up standing on a toolbox drawer to do it. Okay, I think we're ready to do the firmware update now. I might as well just do that before we get too far here. New Neptune 3 Max review pushed me to get one. Awesome. Hope you love it. Okay, let me see where we're at on the screen here. Auto level complete. Oh, now it's doing an input shaper run. I wish I could skip this initial calibration right now. I should have. I forgot I could actually at the very first screen. At the very first screen, I could have skipped all these steps. I didn't. I should have. Uh, I would try Clipper for input shaping. Modified Marlin firmware on the Viper doesn't include it. Unfortunately, any cubic makes it difficult when it comes to... Um, they make it difficult when it comes to... What am I trying to say? Firmware. Marlin firmware. They. That's where I had a falling out with them was the Anticubic Cobra Max. And yeah. How does... Bamboo firmware stack up to Clipper. There's no comparison, just because you can't you can't modify the firmware on the bamboo. It's it's locked down, so I can't make a comparison. Things like a mini fridge. Yes, it is. I wish it was a little more insulated, like a mini fridge, but. To their credit, they did release it. Yes, they did. They did. Um, and it took a really long time to release it for the Cobra Max. And when they released it for the Cobra Max, they released it in a file format that most of us can't work with. Um, it requires like a separate uh, Arduino like coding base that I have zero experience or ability to work with. So I can't customize Marlin firmware for the Cobra Max. I ended up giving that away. Uh, did you already examine the hot end? Yes. I, I showed it a little bit earlier. Um, we'll take a closer look at it when it's doing the firmware update. We'll take a closer look at the uh, hot end shortly. I just gotta get through, it's doing input shaper tuning right now, which it's gonna have to do again, it's annoying. What's the temperature in here? Uh, 70 something? My studio is air conditioned, the garage that is. I have not tried the uh, the new PA uh, pressure advanced calibration in Bamboo Studio. I haven't tried that yet. Um, the new Bamboo Studio, I always manually calibrate pressure advance on my Bamboo machines, so I haven't had a reason to play with that yet. I find the auto calibration on the, um, like with the LiDAR sensor, doesn't work with the shit, so I haven't tried the new one yet. Just vibing away over here. Can we get through this step already? I need to update the firmware. <laughs> I should have skipped this. Sorry, folks. I could have skipped the early stage. Uh, at the very first screen, it said, do you want to skip this? I should have. Oh, they changed the LiDAR pattern. Cool, I haven't tried it lately. Maybe that'll help. I know when I very first got the machine, the LiDAR scan did nothing for me. On the materials I was working with, I was able to go, I can, you can read the log of what the machine is doing when it's doing the scans. 
um, if you look at it the right way. I was able to go through the log and find that it was, you know, laying down different pressure advance values to test it. And every single time it just defaulted to the default setting. It never took any information from the, from the tuning. It just didn't. Uh, they did add manual values in. Good. I mostly use Orca Slicer. I almost exclusively use Orca Slicer. Yeah, I think after the firmware update, I am going to have to go through this damn calibration again. Unfortunately. I think you're right. Can we be done already? Uh, should have skipped this, should have skipped this, should have skipped this. Okay, we're on to the next screen. Blah, 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 you can put filament on. Cool, we're finished. All right, now I can update the firmware and do it all over again. I could probably skip most of that, actually. Cool, that's a tight fit. All right, back here in the back corner is a USB stick. Put that in. I don't know why it's homing right now. Okay, I'm going to update the firmware. Update files detected, update finish, turn off power supply, and then reboot after 20 seconds. Oh yeah, okay. There is a proper chamber um, uh, filter now, now I'm looking at this. Kind of? Can't, I can't tell how you're supposed to change the filter, but it's there. Hmm. Okay. All right, powering back on. Okay. Let's see if we're going to make it. So I'm certainly going to make us go through the whole process over again. I think the screen needs to update too. That's probably the longest part of this process. I don't. Yep, screen updating. That's going to take a minute. Domino wants to say hi. Tell the stream you're very entertaining. This is a very entertaining stream, isn't it? Updating firmware. Grumble, 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 right? 90, oh, that's 86 Fahrenheit here right now, so. If you want to see how big the, how big the machine is or how small my dog is, here's your comparison. <laughs> What? Fuff. Um, Bamboo Studio has rolled a lot of the Orca Slicer. <laughs> Dog for scale, yeah. Uh, Bamboo Studio has rolled a lot of the Orca Slicer stuff into it, I know. But it doesn't have everything. Um, who, has a, who needs a banana when you have a dog, yeah. Um, I forget what it doesn't have. I'd have to look, but screen's still updating. It's gonna, I think the instruction said the screen update could take a while. It's only 98 in Vegas today. Ugh, screw that. Screw that.
Yeah, the screen is at 5%. Let's take a look at the slicer while we're waiting. Oh, I wanted to show you the hot end. That was it. Let's take a closer look at the hot end. I'm gonna switch camera angles. Okay. Can we see that? Any time now. Focus. Okay. Get a little light on this. There's the hot end. So bamboo at the top, rapido at the bottom, effectively. Um, yeah, ceramic heater element, bamboo style of heatsink and mounting mechanism, and then a ceramic heater element like on a Fadus Rapido. Looks pretty much like a clone of the Fadus Rapido, if not the same one off of it, in my opinion. And this version, this there's, the one that's installed does not have a wear resistant nozzle. This is the wear resistant nozzle in here right now. So it comes with a whole hot end, just like a bamboo, so you can swap it out without having to um, with having to replace the nozzle, but you can replace the nozzle, it's not fixed. I don't know, I think it might be a, a volcano nozzle? I don't know. Maybe we'll take it out and find out. Maybe we'll take it out and find out. A dry heat. I don't want to. I don't want to hear about dry heat. I don't. I don't buy it. I have been to Vegas. I have experienced a dry heat. I'm good. It's hot. I don't care. It's hot. Hot is hot. Hot is hot. Okay. I need a wrench for this. Uh, let's, I'm gonna go grab a wrench to take this nozzle out of here quick. Screen is still updating. It is at 13%. What do you do? At least it's a very slow process. Okay, six millimeter wrench? No. Seven millimeter wrench? Yes. And the wrench to support the heater block. 15 millimeter. 7 millimeter or 15 millimeter wrench so we can take the nozzle out. <sighs> what state am I in? I am in Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's 86 here right now. I rarely leave the studio where it is. I have the AC set to 73 right now. It's probably more like um, 74 in here. It is a volcano nozzle. So. so it's running. Is that a volcano nozzle? Seems shorter than a volcano. Let me go grab a volcano nozzle real quick to compare. Wanna figure out if it is or is not a volcano nozzle. Updating, updating, updating. We're gonna keep on updating. One thing about a lot of new microphones that's superior, even though I don't like them generally, is uh, I can walk away and come over here to the other side of the studio and grab something and still talk to you folks, even though I'm completely separated from the stream at the moment. Yeah, no, it is not a volcano now. Okay. That's disappointing. It's an in-between length of nozzle. Let's, uh... Whoa! Change. See if I can zoom in on this quick. Or focus. Okay. So, 
two different lengths of nozzle. The slightly, it's like two millimeters shorter, guesstimating. But the cheaty nozzle is ever so slightly shorter than a volcano nozzle. That's disappointing. That is disappointing. This light moved. Disappointing. One of my former students lives in Kuwait and always laughs at me when I say how hot. Oof, forget that. I lived in Texas. Uh, I lived in Texas when it was... Um, the one summer that I lived there, it was over 100 degrees for over 100 days straight. And that was enough. I got my fill. I got my fill of heat in Texas. I will hide in my studio in the air conditioning. Thank you very much. I will hide in the air conditioning. I grew up in Pennsylvania. I lived in Massachusetts for a couple of years. I, I did Texas. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Where are we at? 24%. On the update, twenty-four percent. Ugh, I don't feel like clearing off this entire bench to get the um, the other machine up here. Want to become a snowbird? I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I like the snow personally, though. So that's just me. But, okay, I gotta get the spool holder on this thing. I might as or I might as well put the spool holder on this thing while we're waiting on this update. So, gotta go. Thank you for being here, Leopold. Pennsylvania, the worst of all seasons. You are not wrong. You are not wrong. When we visited Vancouver last week for LTX, um, visiting Vancouver, uh we were both absolutely loving it. Uh, Ruby is from Southern California originally. So like, you know, for her, it's uh, uh, Vancouver weather was lovely and uh, she's not a huge fan of Pennsylvania weather in the summer or winter. Okay, let's spin this thing around so I can keep it updating and I will uh, get the spool holder installed. Ah. Alright. Spool holder and the whole box it goes on. change out camera angle real quick was our LTX as well the weather was very nice it was gorgeous it was beautiful let's change camera angle a bit here there we go hi folks Have you heard of Romania? Sure, home of uh, home of Dracula. Okay, how does the spool holder sit on here? There it is. Uh, 
very straightforward very straightforward now this goes there's a plug in this fitting and this sits on here cool now this goes on that cool that's held tight I had to put a piece of PTFE tube from filament runout sensor. Uh, you can't quite see it on that angle. Yeah. Filament runout sensor does have one. That's awfully short. Why is that so short? This piece of PTFE is not long enough to reach from here to here. That's dumb. Yeah, I really love the ergonomically friendly rear spool holder too. My favorite part of this machine by a long shot. And these pre-cut pieces of tubing are too short. That's dumb. These pre-cut pieces are too short. Oh well. I could go grab some and cut my own, but I don't really care to. I'm, I'm gonna take this off of here. Screw it, it's coming off. I don't like rear spool holders anyway. It's coming off. I'll just put a length of this in here for um, or a feed. I'll just run an external spool holder for now. I'm pretty sure the instructions somewhere said you could mount the spool holder elsewhere, but I don't see where else. 39% on the update. Okay. Let's take a closer look at some stuff in the machine, I guess, while we're waiting. Which means I'm gonna grab the camera So, sorry if anybody gets a little motion sick on the next thing, but let's grab the camera and take a closer look at a few things. I'm gonna try and keep it steady. Oh, tripod's in the way. Sorry, folks. And I lost camera. Power. I accidentally had the tripod on top of the power wire. Coming back, sorry. Okay, that should be better. Now let's look inside of here. So yeah. It now has tubular steel rods for the x-axis gantry. These are tubular steel rods, not solid. So they're lighter than solid, but stronger than, well not stronger, but should be longer lasting than the carbon rods that the original version had, or the Bamboo X1 has. It's got nice like nine millimeter wide belts on this thing. So that's kind of impressive to see. So nice strong wide belts on this thing. See where we're at. Oh hey, it's moving a little faster now. 45% on the update. Let's see if we can get this cover off. I think you just pick it up. Yeah, it lifts up. And then off. There we go. And there's the extruder. It's kind of a kind of like the um, Reality K1. It's a large gear extruder using gears like the Bontech LGX. And you see that bamboo stylish hot end on there. 
Oh, there's a sil there's like a the whole mount sock thing around the BL Touch to protect it. Interesting. It looks like a slightly modified BL Touch. It doesn't look stock. Let's look at it from up here. Interesting. Um, down in the bottom of the machine. Let's go turn down the turn up my ISO a little bit. So you can see that now the steel bar or metal, I'm not sure if it's steel, I haven't checked with the magnet. It's now a metal thing, a metal bar cross member that attaches Z motors side to side to reinforce the base and also ties into the outer frame structure. So that's the big change. Previously, this was all just plastic. I think this might actually be metal too. I think this whole bottom might be metal now. That's neat. And back there is the chamber heater. Let's dial up to, it is a, not block the light. It's a small little PTC heater, but it does the job. It's a 24 volt, 300 watt unit, and it gets the job done. Now, if you can see, underside of the bed, and then the auxiliary part cooling off to the side over there. Turn down my ISO. Okay, put the cover back on. And a single 5015 part cooling fan mounted to the to the tool head for part cooling. Wait, why is this? Oh, I kind of think I had it wrong. Yeah, I did. Yeah, get on there. All right, I'm gonna put the camera back on the tripod. And we're at 55% on the update. Geez, still so far to go. There we go. Now the cover's on. Okay. Alright, let me see. How that camera angle looks now that I messed with everything. Decent. All right. Cool. Oh. Ay ay ay. Cool. Well, I wish, wish, wish I'd started this update sooner. The screen update is taking forever such a slow freaking update oh well oh well have you seen some interesting genuinely useful uses of 3d printing lately like industry or whatever um Nothing especially, uh, nothing comes to mind offhand. Like I have been trying to use 3D printing in projects more and finding plenty of uses for it. And I'll have more videos coming where I'm doing that, but how was LTX? LTX was awesome. If you haven't seen my LTX video, I recommend watching it, but LTX was freaking great. I'm really happy, glad that they invited me I appreciate that. Um, 
that they had me as such a smaller creator. I mean, compared to LTX, 15 million followers, and I got 30,000. <laughs> so it was really cool. It was really cool that they like had folks my size, some folks who had even smaller audiences, and it was. Um, it was really an experience to see a, a you know a um, a, a YouTube channel effectively that is so much bigger and such a totally different operation. Like, I have zero interest in ever being that that same. But like, it's cool. You know, I don't ever want to have a hundred plus employees, but it's neat to see somebody doing that with YouTube, you know? Any leaks or hints to um, if they're gonna have a larger 3D printing section next year? Totally. Um, they they are, they are completely acknowledged that 3D printing was more popular than they expected it to be, and that there's not confirmation that there's going to be an LTX next year yet. If there is, there will be a larger 3D printing section. Absolutely. They. Everybody I talked to on the staff completely acknowledged that 3D printing was should have had a bigger section. Totally. So, see the custom LTT screwdriver. Yep, my custom colored LTT screwdriver. Tried the best I could to get my company colors. The blue is not like should be more of a teal than a blue, but it was what they had. So, Steve builds. Hello, welcome. Waiting on a firmware update, so we're kind of twiddling our thumbs at the moment. Which Voron should I do for my first one? Oof. That is difficult to say. Um, a Voron Zero is annoying. Just because it's so small and fiddly. The tiny little nuts, and if you forget to put a nut in, you're screwed. But I really like them. Um, I really enjoy them. That said, everybody else is saying Trident 2.4. They're definitely easier. They take longer, but they are easier to build than the, than the V0. I love my 2.4. You're not limited on size with the 2.4. You can build whatever size you want. I, I don't have a Trident. I haven't built a Trident. I really would like to. I've got another 2.4 I'm going to be building. I still don't have a Trident, but... If you forgot to put in a nut, you're screwed. Enjoy the fastener pun. Hey. Uh, Trident versus Flying Gantry. The Flying Gantry of the 2.4 is a little over... It's annoying. It's a bit annoying. It's kind of silly. Um, uh, I was busy volunteering Saturday, but Sunday got to hang out with the Pantheon guys and got to take some nylon CS swag. Cool. Um, so, I, I would probably say the Trident's going to be more... I haven't built one, but it seems like where the direction I'd like to go. Uh, what printer is that by you? Mike, hi, this is the uh, Chidi X-Max 3. Uh, still working on getting you a Dremel 1000. Awesome. Uh, love to talk to you about that at some point. We should email about that. Uh, yeah, this is Chidi X-Max uh, 3. Trident is a less finicky build. Yeah, like, quad gantry leveling is just kind of annoying. Having to do quad gantry leveling all the time. Like, working with my 2.4 of the last week, my clicky probe is acting up right now. So I'm actually just finished today a design for an update uh, where I'm gonna run clicky PCB. And clicky probe worked out, it, it was acting up, so quad gantry leveling was being a pain. And you have to do it for every print, you know? One thing with the Trident is it's not a full cube. What do you mean by it's not a full cube? Um, 
I really need to go and try it. I just need to. Like, I gotta bug bug somebody. 350, 350 by 250. Well, none of them. Uh, none of the. Oh, 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 because the lead screws on the on the Z axis. Got it. But how? Uh, hello from Guyana. Hello. Um, three point bed tramming. Yeah, you're still gonna have that. Well, how often are you maxing out Z? Would be my big thing. Like most printers, for me anyway, you're you're mostly using bed volume, but not height majority of the time. Also, my 300 cubed um, 2.4 is limited to 265 millimeters on Z. I only have 265 on Z. Uh, because it's <clears throat> the Voron 2.4 is not 300 cubed, like a 300 millimeter or 350. They're not 300 or 350 tall. They're like 285 or 275, somewhere around there. They limit it to because it starts to ram the the reverse Bowden tube and whatever into the uh, top panel on the machine. And then mine, I have the. I have the whopping Voron um, kinematic bed mount, which raises the bed up a little bit, so I lost a few more millimeters there. I have a printer that prints 400 millimeters high, and I will never use it. The only times I generally print things really, really tall is so that I can test a machine to make sure it prints really, really tall for a video, for a review. Like, before I review a machine, I make sure I max out the Z because I want to. I want to ensure, and I'm good. Like I'm glad I did that on the. Um. Fuck the. FL Sun V400. The FL Sun V400. I hit a limit on the Z axis where I was outside of the volume because it's a Delta printer, uh, trying to do a tall print, and I had to like do a firmware update to get it to actually max out Z. Most machines I find are underrated on Z axis. A lot of them, annoyingly. Like, overrated, I mean. Where they say it's taller than it actually is. The only time I got close to 350 was a 3D printed PC case I designed. Like, don't get me wrong, I printed plenty of really tall stuff. Uh, what's your most enjoyable video format? Edited video, stream, video for uh, short videos. My personal favorite to make is full edited videos. I don't like making shorts. I do it. Like, I, TikTok used to be my biggest platform. Still is my biggest platform as viewers, uh, followers is concerned. Um, I don't enjoy it nearly as much as producing a full-on video. I like video editing. I like filming. I enjoy, I enjoy the whole process. Um, I like making longer form videos personally. Streams can be fun. I'm, I'm not a people person for the most part, so this is is difficult for me to keep energy up. Like I'm absolutely drained on energy right now, but it's still, like, it's still fun to do. Uh, I still enjoy these, and I have another one coming up probably this Saturday I'll do. Um, and so, for me, long-form videos. I think most profitable is also long-form videos. It's the longest chance for, um, not a problem, 3D print people. Um, it gives me the most chance to show you products you might be interested in buying and then I can make money off affiliate sales if you happen to be interested in those products or things I happen to show. Um, it's the best opportunity for sponsor deals. It's, I make the most money off of the long form videos themselves, like TikTok pays garbage. Been using the XMAX 3 for three weeks and so no issues, awesome. Uh, me either, definitely an introvert, but I also am a forced extrovert as I work in marketing for a long time. More power to you. I worked in sales for a while, and it absolutely drained me every single day coming home. After a long day of trying to sell people things, like, it just, it wore me out. I'm just, I'm an introvert through and through. Uh, it's just how it is. 
What percentage are we at here? 89%. 89%. Fusion 360 or on shape. Um, I use Fusion 360. I've only barely played in on shape. I don't have a good good uh, opinion, like a um, a good basis to say versus the two. I use Fusion 360 and I'm happy with it. I, the only thing I don't like about Fusion 360 is just how freaking slow it gets when like if I'm building a full 3D printer um, it's so it bogs down pretty bad but otherwise I love fusion uh, Mike why is the firmware update so slow hell if I know I wish I knew uh, um, some reason the screen is taking a long time the screen says it's got a baud rate of 11 uh, 11,500 so maybe the baud rate on the screen is just way too slow updating <sighs> Like transferring data? Don't know. It's the screen. The main board updated forever ago. Um, haven't seen you on the FYP in a while. I've got a lot of new projects. I just post on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Mandic Really. That's where all the action is. Uh, I'm not on TikTok that much because my videos just don't get shown to people, unfortunately. Uh, there's a way to update it faster, but you have to pull out the SD card. That's annoying. It's slow because they update over serial. Yep. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Max build volume. This is 325 by 325 by 315. Uh, it's because they're not patching. They're totally overwriting firmware. That makes sense. I can't get used to on shape. I can't either. Uh, I tried it a little bit here and there, and like just the whole web interface doesn't make sense to me. Like, uh, I don't, I like, I tried to export, you know, a step file and it just was overly complicated for me, but it's probably because I'm used to, um, fusion. You know, I'm sure that's, that's a driving force. Uh, Nicholas, Bamboo X1 versus Voron. It depends. You know, if the build volume of the Bamboo X1 meets your needs, it's a solid printer. I use mine all the time. I used it today. I also use my Voron 2.4 today. Um... It really depends what you need. I I prefer my Boron 2.4 because I like to have control over things. I'm a control freak. Um, but the Bamboo is a great printer. It really is a good printer. It's just um, locked down. You can't really mess with it in detail and that's kind of annoying. Uh, do like Shaper 3D. I haven't gotten into it. I tried it a little bit on my iPad a while ago and I just never quite got into it. Uh, tried Plasticity. Nope, I haven't tried it yet. What's your opinion on the Ender 3 Max? Uh, a fine enough printer, but honestly outdated at this point. You can get better machines for about the same price. Something like the Neptune 3 Plus is going to be the same build volume at basically the same price but a direct drive extruder and better hardware overall i would look at something like the neptune 3 plus instead of the ender 3 max i don't see a reason for the ender 3 max right now i haven't really been watching michael's videos lately teaching tech he kind of went on that series on like on shape and i didn't really care and so no offense to him i just i just haven't been engaged with his content lately do you plan on installing updated Clipper or sticking with the outdated Clipper build? I'm going to stick with what they have for the moment. Booting up. Hey, we got a boot. <coughs> we are booting. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stick with what's on here for right now. I want to test the machine out as they ship it, uh, as they send it out, you know, before I go messing with things. Maybe I'll end up building my own, you know, build off of this, messing with it, or swapping a different main board in or something. I don't know, but. Plasticity seems cool for less critical parts. Fusion, if you need CAD accurate, uh, that makes sense. Uh, his videos are so technically detailed, I really like that style. Yeah, I, I like that about, like, uh, Stefan personally um 
I, I like I enjoy Michael's videos. I do. I just kind of like lately. Eh. Short for wine fridge. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so we got to boot it up. Let's see where we're at here. Update finished. Yay! I can take this out of here now. All right, now I got to run the input shaper tune again. It didn't. It's not making me go through the whole calibration menu again. That's great. So it's going to do an input shape or two now. Hi, Doggo. Plasticity is designed for artists. Okay. Uh, yeah, because like me, 95% of what I do these days, when I used to design my can cups more, I might have needed some more artistic ability um, in my software. But for me, most of what I do today I need, there is no built-in camera. I really, really wish there was. There's a USB port on the top. Um, so it'd be nice to be able to put the, to, I'm gonna test that, I don't know, but I'm going to test if that will work with a camera. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, and then maybe make a mount up top here to put a camera in. I really wish it shipped with a camera. CAD for artists, okay, that's cool. Maybe I'll have to give, the, give that to Ruby and let her try. Uh, have you ever tried, Mike, have you tried the beacon? No, I haven't tried the beacon yet. I mean, I saw it on the on the Dremel machine there, but I, I haven't played with it yet. Uh, for my needs, I've been using Clicky Probe lately. Um, they ran out of room for a, a camera. Yeah, I know, it's such a small, or so packed in here. <laughs> I don't get it. They could have easily fit a freaking Raspberry Pi cam or something, but I guess the, the board doesn't necessarily have an interface. Just ordered the Anchor M5C, never printed anything in my life. It's my foot in the door. Cool. Uh, I have an M5C, it arrived yesterday. So I'm gonna be doing just a, a little announcement. I'm gonna be doing like a mega unboxing on Saturday. Um, on Saturday, I'm gonna unbox everything I don't have a reason to unbox anywhere else. So, the Bamboo P1P. I have the Bamboo P1P I haven't unboxed yet. Uh, I have a Fizect 0.2 kit I haven't unboxed yet. That obviously I'm not gonna build, but I'm gonna unbox it because there's some cool stuff about it. Um, I've got the Anchor M5C we're gonna unbox. Uh, I got a new printer from Lotmax. They sent me a new one. That I only accepted it because it's like blinged out with RGB. That's gonna be a very weird one. Um, so we're gonna unbox that as well. And there's at least one, oh, the Creality K1. <laughs> the Creality K1. So we're gonna unbox all of those in one stream on Saturday. Hopefully I still have a voice for it then and can last as long as that stream's gonna go. It's gonna be a, a marathon stream of unboxing. So if you wanna hang out with me on Saturday, we're gonna do that. Unbox a whole bunch of printers and I'll probably unbox one, start a print, unbox the next one, start a print. Input shaper tuning. Um, yeah, so that's the game plan. Just a ridiculous stream. I was trying to see if I could get any last minute more printers and go for like a, like a six, seven hour stream. I'm not gonna have a voice by the end of it, but uh, should be fun. Should be fun to try, you know? I, I've been I've been putting off unboxing like the Creality K1 and the P1P. I, I can't make the time to get to them, so why not? Do you have a 0.2? I have the Seabor 0.2. I still have. Um, I currently still have the zero the Seabor 0.2, and Fizek just sent me a a 0.2 kit. So. Seems a little bit they ran out, run out of time to release a bamboo comparison. Sorry, I don't I don't understand the question. What time Saturday? Um, probably noon or one o'clock. Uh, you know what? Probably one p.m. I haven't set it yet, but after this stream, after I decompress from this stream, I'll probably set it. So probably one p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you out there on the west, what is that? Uh, Ten a.m. Watch the Seabor video seem like a good kit. Yeah, it's a fine kit. The Seabor one is, dog, she just pulled my microphone cable. Stop. 
is not that time. She wants her D-I-N-N-E-R. Um, did you mean to say the P1S? No, I didn't. I meant to say the P1P. I still have a P1P in the box that I've never opened. Um, I have a P1P in the box I've never opened. Yeah. Once filament has gotten brittle, is it toast? Yeah, pretty much. Usually it's only like the end of it that gets brittle. You might be able to get past the brittle section. Uh, but yeah, I still have a P1P in the box that I haven't opened. 6 p.m. Europa time. Okay, that sounds like a pretty good time span then. That'll hit my UK, Europe audience, everybody pretty good. So Awesome. I've uh, been building rooks and simple cores, but eventually get to a boron. Cool. Uh, the Seabor kit, I don't care for the Seabor kit personally. Didn't love it. The Fizect kit that they sent me, I have high hopes for that kit. It's the, It comes with printed parts, same as the as the Seabor kit, but it's got nicer parts in it. Um, as far as, I'm pretty sure it comes with their CNC lightened x-rail i think it comes with the kirigami bed we'll find out on saturday when we unbox it we'll take a look at the parts on it uh in that kit on saturday so um yeah i don't know when i'm gonna have time to build that one um i i thought about banging it out this week but i decided to do these live streams because i figured they might be a little easier on me uh how i'm feeling this week so let's check i think we might be done on Input shape, yeah. Input shaping is done. Let's do a bed level. And I'll warm up the bed so I can do a Z offset adjustment, and then we can actually get to freaking printing with this thing. Uh, you thought Seabor was better than Fizect. Um, you know, before I got this kit, I might have thought that too. I have hopes that this kit's gonna be a little better. Um, but I don't know yet. I haven't built it, I don't know. But what I'm seeing parts list wise, looks like it's better on paper, so. Or I'll pick up an LDO kit. I mean, LDO puts the best, puts pretty much the best stuff in there. Um, like, I really like LDO kit quality. When it comes to the V0 stuff though, I'm not sure. The bigger ones, sure. The V0 has become, like the V0 market has become pretty competitive between Formbot, Fizek, Seabor. It's it feels hard to justify the price of an LDO kit in that market. I love Jason. Love you Jason, but uh, it it's I don't know, a little hard. But the bigger market like two more on 2.4s, Tridents, yeah. See the LDO stuff is just great quality. My next 2.4, I've got a LDO kit on the shelf over there that Jason helped me with. Actually, Joel gave it to me when I built his 2.4. When I built, when we built his 2.4, uh, Joel actually had a Voron 2.4 kit that was missing some pieces when he built his. Um, the LDO kits run around 650. What is the Fizek kit? The Fizek kit with printed parts, I think, is 450. Um, yeah, 450 bucks. I want to say so. Like talking about TikTok and not seeing your videos, I just saw four back to back. Lovely, awesome. I keep getting like I keep getting that where they like seem to suddenly push my older videos. Um, Cobra Max versus this. Uh, this build volume is 325 by 325 X and Y. 330, I think maybe you can max it out to. So you're 70 millimeters shy of the Cobra Max, but you got so much more going on here. Uh, you and Joel should reach out to Adam Savage. He could use help with his 3D printing setup. Joel knows Adam. Joel and Adam uh, are acquaintances. So, like, they could talk. I, I wouldn't. He wouldn't know me from... A hole in the ground, I'm sure, but uh, Joel would could reach out to him. Okay, time to level this thing or uh, do a Z offset, and then we can actually print something. Let's move camera angle. Okay, 
Okay. Z offset adjustment. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. It's going to home now. He has a bunch of bamboos. Yeah, I saw that. He also has a Cobra Max I saw. I think he put a video out on his Cobra Max today. I definitely would have recommended not getting Cobra Max. <coughs> he didn't watch my Cobra Max review. I bet on that. Yeah, I would bet he didn't watch my Cobra Max review. Okay. How far are you? I can't see the hot end very well. Come on. We can do it. Come on. I should have got another full millimeter. Just starting to drag. Alright, that feels good. Now it's going to do a bed level run. And then we can actually freaking print something. Finally. One AM in Germany, like my three D printing videos. Awesome. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. <coughs> Sorry. I'm probably pushing my speaking voice a little bit much already. I'm mostly over this, but not all the way. Mostly over it, but not all the way. So I guess for our test print, we're going to use their PLA here. 3D HP, welcome. Hello from Vegas. Hello from Philadelphia. Thanks for being here. I'm going to cut an angle on the tip of this. I assume this is their Rapido filament, so we'll use this to do a test print. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Siri. Siri, Siri, Siri. Ah, uh, so is the ba is this is it a bamboo P1S killer or is it too early to tell? One, it's too early to tell it, different seats, different different uses. Um this just has the build volume, if nothing else. The build volume, the heated chamber, that's something you're not, both of those are something you're not getting with any bamboo machine. So like, if you don't need the build volume, if you don't need to print higher temperature materials on a regular basis, then the P1S is a great option. Um, if you do, then this machine exists. Uh, yeah, hard to say. Come on out of there. Getting through the damn filament runout sensor. I hate filament runout sensors. They serve an excellent purpose, but getting filament through them always freaking gets tricky. Annoyingly tricky. There we go. God, this thing is doing such a large bed mesh. 330 millimeter bed. It looks like it's doing about a 7x7 seven seven grid, probably. Before the filament runs out, your patience runs out. Yep. That's accurate. That is thoroughly accurate. 
Red Panda Zombie with the Super Chat. Thank you very much. Keep it up. Thank you. I shall, I shall, I shall. Creality wants to release something like the AMS. I'm sure they want to. I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, I've really got to unbox the K1. That's one of the reasons I got to do this stream on Saturday is because I just haven't unboxed it. It's been in the box for months now, sitting here. So, If they could do it, that'd be awesome. I'd love to see a good competitor to the AMS, but right now the AMS is just the best multi-material system. Serious question. What's my favorite classic muscle car? 1969 uh, Firebird. 1969 Firebird is my personal favorite classic muscle car. I love the grill. Uh, that each year of the first generation, the first gen F body Firebirds, F body Firebirds, the first gen Firebirds, each year, each year had a different style to it. The 69 is my personal favorite. Have you played with the Beacon Probe yet? Nope. 69 Camaro here. Awesome, Mike. Uh, I've worked on way more 69 Camaros than I have Firebirds, per unfortunately. I used to have a 69 Firebird, but I never had, I couldn't afford to build it, so I sold it. Um, have you ever played with the Beacon Probe yet? Nope. I haven't had any machines that I've played with the Beacon Probe on yet. I couldn't justify spending the money on it just to play with it when I've seen others do videos. I don't love the idea of, uh, on most of my machines, I wouldn't want that attached all the time. I'm sure it's probably just dumb of me to, to care, but you know. Do you like any Japanese cars? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would love, well, I, I really want to build a Z car um, in like a Street Fighter style. So like body kit and like, you know, the Japanese street racer kind of style. Uh, Z car with probably an American V8 if I'm being realistic, because um, it's what I know. Uh, I'd love to do like a 280Z or something like that. Um, they're so affordable even still as they're becoming more popular. They're still pretty reasonably priced because they're rock buckets. But I have the skill to, you know, to, to fix one up. So um, I would love I would love to build one of those. I want to do that. 240Z with a V8. Yeah, I'm, I don't love the 240 style so much in that era one of my favorite cars is the um rx7 the which i forget what the what the name of it is but the like 94 rx7 93 93 rx7 the style of that thing is such a good looking car i'd love to have one of those 90 93 rx7 is a beautiful car um i always say that it like it is the cross it's cross between a corvette and a miata and then, you know, the C5 Corvette just totally... FD, thank you. FD RX-7, that's it. Um, the, the, you know, the C5 Corvette totally ripped off the style of the FD RX-7. Absolutely. Like, Chevy looked at that car and was just, like, copying the notes for the C5 Corvette. Um, and so I'd love to have one of those. And I also really like Evos. Um, having worked on a few of the rotaries, I would swap the, to an LS. That's what I would probably do. I know LSs like the back of my hand. I've built, I don't even know how many cars I've built with LSs in them. So I would, I would probably do that. Uh, it's what I know. I can wire one from scratch and whatever. So, um, what's the other one? Uh, Evo. Eighth, uh, Evo 8, Evo 9. Uh, I really like the Evo 8 and Evo 9 generations. Uh, I actually worked at a Mitsubishi dealership when those were new back in the day. That was my first big job in the auto industry was working at a Mitsu dealership when the Evos were new. Uh, well, the Evo 8 and 9 were new. I love those cars. I love those. I could really see myself having like an Evo 8. I'd love to get an Evo 8 and restore it. Like really restore it nicely. Just really clean. You know, like maybe a front mount intercooler and a cat back exhaust or like you know a down downpipe back exhaust like keep it simple just have a really nice driver car i could see that i'd love that 
Evo Subi, yeah, everybody's got their thing. I had a Subaru. I really liked my, um, I had a Legacy. A, what year was it? 2013? 2009? I think it was 2009. I forget. I had a Legacy. I really liked it for a daily driver car. Uh, Four-door sedan. I'd love a Spec B Legacy. I really, I, I, mine was not spec B, it was naturally aspirated four cylinder, uh, five speed. Um, it was a good driver, like daily driver car, but uh, I would have loved to have a spec B one. I was looking for a spec B before I ended up buying the non turbo. Okay, we are ready to go with our first print. Let me make sure I got the G code here for this thing. Um, oh, you know what? I need to get this on the network quick. Uh, I'm going to do that real quick. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm not going to have you show you the network screen, believe it or not. <coughs> oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Saving, which means rebooting. Maybe? Okay. Network. Oh, do they not have... Did they not? Oh, there it is. Okay. I was going to say, did they not put a wireless module in this? For a second, it didn't look like it did. It didn't populate with my uh, my network SSID right away. Come on. Wi-Fi connecting! Confirmed. All right, it's on my Wi-Fi. Cool. Now we can load up the firmware, or the, not firmware, the uh, first G-code and get this thing printing. All right. All right. Let me pull up my network real quick so I can find the... One nine two dot one six eight. I love Unify OS. My first restoration was a nineteen seventy Rebel machine. My grandfather gave me. Cool. Uh, coming in with the uh, Daniel. Coming with the ten dollar Canadian uh, super chat. Thank you very much. Very appreciated. Uh, I worked on. The only AMC I worked on extensively was actually an AMX GT clone. It was a rare, uh, it was actually a concept car. Um, it was a concept car that was never actually put into production. And I worked at a shop, we were building it, uh, making a concept into reality. The concept, there was only ever one taken to a car show, crushed after that never made into production and we were building a replica of it amx gt and never got around to but it didn't get finished while i worked at that shop so what do you think about the creality k1 don't have an opinion uh mine is currently in a box actually it's holding up the tv that i'm reading the messages off of right now um I will be unboxing it this Saturday on stream. Finally be unboxing it. All right, let's get into fluid here. Paste and go. Ah, damn it. Love mine, it's behind me right now, cranking out parts, awesome. All right, I'm gonna heat this thing up so I can get filament loaded here. And I'm gonna pull up a slicer quick and uh, I wanna double check. I mean, we have to do their Benchy, right? That's like what we have to do for the first print, isn't it? New test files, ba ba ba. That doesn't look like the right G-code, but I'm going with it anyway.
Why are you not loading? Oh, wrong window. My Creality K1 works great, but has a life of its own sometimes. Oh boy. I'm looking forward to trying it, but yeah, I have not yet. Okay. So, let's load up this file. I wish this thing had a main sale on it. Oh, looks like they already have a G code on here. Upload. Download. Okay. Uploading the G code. Uh, did partner get into 3D printing? My girlfriend is interested, but mostly to print occasional benchy cat. Um, we haven't yet. That's been one of the things. She's just not that comfortable on camera yet. Uh, and we're working on it. Excuse me. Um, we're working on getting her more comfortable in front of camera. Like at LTX, she was my model for making my custom screwdriver. Uh, so we're working on it. Uh, unfortunately, because the bamboo P1P is for her, I'm going to end up unboxing it this weekend because I just got to get it out of the box. I talked to the folks at Bamboo at LTX and they're like, I'm really sorry. You sent me this printer a while ago and I haven't unboxed it yet. Um, so she's been getting into the laser stuff a little more and she's been pretty interested in that. So we're going to get her in, into the printing, but I'm kind of just taking it, taking it easy, not trying to push on her. Okay. Is there a load filament macro? There does not seem to be a load filament macro. Okay, I'm gonna switch screens here and get filament loaded into this thing. Real quick. Let's go through the screen control. Load. 50 millimeters. Load it in. Push this filament to the extruder. It's pulling, awesome. Mm, didn't go enough. I dislike when machines don't have presets, like 50 millimeters is not enough to load filament fresh on this machine. There we go, cool. It needed like 80 millimeters from hitting the gears to the nozzle and I dislike when they do that. All right, folks, we are ready to print a Benchy. Seems like a really good display. I mean, I'm, I like the interface on this. It's not terrible. All right. I think we're ready to hit go here. Hopefully this doesn't screw up because I used the G code from the plus, not the max. All right, uh, I think I'm gonna grab one of the, the second camera angle and bring it closer so you can get a better view in here maybe, hopefully. Uh, how do I wanna do this? Confirm. Right, let's get this camera angle so we can at least see the machine working. And this angle, I'm going to bring closer. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
get in here so we can actually see me with the printer. <laughs> Alright. So it just did the basic level run before print. Really? Huh. This G code sliced at 210 degrees Celsius. All right, I think we can change camera angles now. Now the joy of like seeing something like this. All right, I'm gonna try moving that camera a little closer so we can get a better view. Get up in this printer's business, camera. I gotta move this camera's tripod a bit. How long has been my, my microphone been messed up? I just realized it was like unplugged somehow. I don't know when the heck that happened. Okay, let's move camera angle. Get you folks a better view in here. It sounds worse now. Really? What the heck were you folks listening to me on then? That is very strange. Because my microphone pack was actually... Okay. I don't know what the heck you folks have been listening to me on, but, um... Whatever. Strange. How's it sound now? That is very strange. Huh. I don't know what's going on with the audio then. Boop. Huh. For some reason my mic gain was all off, I guess. Let me try one thing. I want to. Alright, let me try one more thing. How about now? How does it sound now? Is it too loud, too overdriven? Looking at the waveform, it looks like maybe it will be better. Alright. I don't know what the heck happened there. Okay, that's how it should have been for a while now. I don't know when that cat fucked up, so... Okay. Alright. It's been messed up since the beginning. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, it's not one thing, it's another. It's a good thing your backup audio solution worked great. I didn't even realize I had a backup audio solution going, so here we are. Glad to hear it, though. Now we can't hear the printer. Well, let me get closer to it. I want to get the camera a closer view.
There we go. This is supposed to be a 16 minute Benchy G code. So. Nine minutes into, or no, five minutes into a 16 minute Benchy. I mean, it's flying. We'll see how well it turns out, but it's flying. It is flying. Like the filament tube mounting on this versus the K-Mac, uh, K-1. I get that. Looks like I need to focus that a little better. Let's move this camera just a little bit. It's flying as I'm watching my ender print. Yeah, I get that. Let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. Yeah, I can digitally zoom in a little bit. House of Oron 2.4, beautiful right now. Um, the Voron 2.4 is running beautifully right now. Uh, the clicky probe is acting up on it a little bit. That's a little annoying. But otherwise, it's been great. I ran a full bed of Voron 0.2 parts on it the other day. No issues. No wobble of the whole machine. Yeah, I mean, like, this bench that it's on right now is pretty is not stable. It's saw horses and a butcher block top. Um, but it's doing really well. Uh, on the fence, another X1 or the X plus? Ooh, that's hard to say. It depends. If you're really happy with your X1 and you just want a machine to produce production stuff, like you're not worried about having something different to play with, then I would say just get another X1. If you want something different to experience something different and have just another fast printer that you can maybe play with something a little differently, then I would think the X Plus. Um, I'm not ready to commit to saying this is like buy this machine right now. You know, this I've just unboxed this, so I need a little more time in that. But I can see the directions for both of them. Seen way too many YouTubers do that. Yeah, no. Seem like messed up bottom. I can't tell from here. Looks like maybe some filament got dragged into the bottom a little bit, but eh. off topic. Is there really a sriracha shortage? I don't know. I don't eat. I don't use sriracha. It's not vegan. I don't use sriracha. It's not vegan, so I don't know. Uh, lighting is top down, so it's going to look way worse. That's 
that's fair. This lighting is not is not going to be uh, flattering to the print. I'm sure of that. I'm sure that's true. Yeah, I really wish there was an angle to the lighting and it was facing this way more than, uh, I wish the lighting came in like this way, but it kind of shoots down. Think Mandic's an honest and good guy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. I try my best to be honest even when I'm doing like sponsored content or something, and I just hope that people, you know, appreciate that. I know my audience appreciates it, so like I try to tell brands like, hey, they're gonna appreciate honesty more than blowing smoke up their ass. So all printers should use nozzle print uh, nozzle lighting. I don't disagree. Uh, especially a lot of these machines. A lot of these machines, the hot end is kind of like hides the print area. Like this one, the, the extruder tool head housing is a little bigger. It's blocking light from getting the thing. That's kind of annoying. Now the factory closed because of annoying thing. That, that sucks. You think that would be like something they'd think about. Seeing prints like this would be uh, as crazy to you thinking about like five years ago. Yeah. Even when I got into, pr I've been into printing that long and it's amazing how far we've come in such a short time with these printers. Look at that. I could never have imagined that e e a couple years ago, you know? <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, folks. This stream has gone a lot longer than I expected to, so my voice is paying the price. I'd hope to keep it under two hours. Honestly, noise level, like, it's not silent, but it's not bad, noise level-wise. The loudest thing is the auxiliary part cooling fan on this side over here, but like, man, it really moves some air. <laughs> Plug in a printer, load film, and it just works. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Adding a light to the print head would not be so expensive, but be a big help. Totally agree. Or, I wish it had like a light strip right here, just under, like right here. Cause the light strip is more, it's like up here. It's way higher than it needs to be. If the light strip was down lower, it would shine across the bed better. That'd be better. Maybe I'll see about adding another light strip somewhere more visible. How much time we got left on this? One minute left. One minute left on our 16 minute Benchy. One minute left. Haven't even gotten to the smokestack yet. We haven't even gotten to the smokestack yet. I wanna see what print speed this is running at. I should look on uh, fluid real quick before it's done. It's printing at 250 millimeters a second. It's hitting 250 millimeters. Like it's, it's averaging 80, 200, 250. Oh, travel speed's almost 500. Looks like travel speed was like 480. Oh, sounds like we're on the smokestack. Yep, smokestack time. It's 
Is it possible to use an Ender 3 Pro with only a Chromebook and no TF card? Only if you're running Clipper firmware or Octoprint. Um, it's gonna be an involved process to make that happen. Uh, it's doable, but it's kind of an advanced thing, I would say, to make it happen. Uh, is active heating so much better? Absolutely. Hey, okay. Print's done. Um, the, okay, like, let me look here. Oh, wow. They over, they overstated. This was supposed to be a 16 minute bench EG code. It was 15 minutes and 15 seconds. 15 minutes and 15 seconds. Let me refit this to my screen real quick. Uh, transform, fit the screen. Boop. There we go. Okay. Um, what was I trying to say? I don't remember. Oh, active chamber heating. The active chamber heating just heats up a chamber so, so much faster. I'll give you a demonstration in a moment. Okay. Uh, the top panel's open. The door is open, so the chamber is cool right now. Uh, let me look on the, on fluid and see if there's a chamber. Okay, yeah. Currently the chamber temp is 30 degrees Celsius. Okay. Let's get this print off. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, our print, Benchy, does have a little bit of an issue at the base. Let me, what was my first 3D printer? It was a Ender 3. I still have it. It was an Ender 3. Okay, let me come around and show you folks a close-up view of this Benchy. Here's our 15 minute and 15 second Benchy. So that little blobbing there looks like some filament like got stuck on the nozzle at the start and got into the first couple of layers. So there is that imperfection, but otherwise, like input shaper tuning, the bow doesn't have much in the way of ghosting. <laughs> Little issue up here from the bridging of the cabin. The stack looks amazing for a 15 minute Benji. Top layer looks pretty good. The text on the back is almost legible. The bottom looks like they just totally freaking didn't bother with the bottom text. So they're cheating there. They're cheating there, but the bow, look how clean the bow is for that. Like, yeah. Okay. I'm impressed. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to close the door on this thing. I'm going to put a top panel on it and we'll heat up the chamber. And I'll show you how fast the chamber heating works with the active chamber heater. Uh, same open holes in the MCU that the, I haven't taken the panel off to look at the MCU yet, so I cannot say. Good on height. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So, like, I don't think this follows Speedboat Benchy rules, but still pretty good. All right. Chamber temp is currently 30. And let's set it to the full 65 that it can go to. So I'm setting it to 65 now. And okay, I can hear the fan running on the chamber heater. Uh, let me let me see if I can get you folks uh, a view of fluid here. I think I can.
Sorry about that, folks. You should be able to hear me now. I didn't have my microphone out of this one. Sorry. Um, okay, so active chamber is heating right now. And it's up. Five degrees in... How long has it been now? Well, you know what? I'm just going to start a stopwatch. We're at 35 degrees right now. I set it to 65. We'll see how long it takes to hit there. Thirty-seven. Let's see if I can, I can blow this up, yeah? Yeah. Is there an advantage to these companies using fluid over mainsail? I really don't know why people use fluid over mainsail. No offense to the fluid team. I prefer mainsail. Uh, I don't know why all these companies default to fluid. No idea. Uh, I prefer mainsail personally. Just a few of the UI things I just like better about mainsail. Uh, retired USN SCPO. Thank you very much for the super chat. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you, thank you. This has gone longer than I hoped for, so appreciate it. There's me using Octo Clipper like a chump. Hey, you've probably been running Clipper longer than I have, so do what works for you. If you're fine with Octo Clipper, go for it. I love mainsail personally. Uh, I know Scott was talking about possibly getting mainsail into Marlin or using mainsail with Marlin. I would love to see that. Totally love to see that. A full two weeks of Clipper. Oh, okay. Well then, but three years of Octoprint. Okay, I can understand why you go that route then. Uh, I way prefer mainsail over... Oct Try mainsail. You can install mainsail alongside of Octoprint and you could run both. Um, give it a try, I would say. So we're up to 45 degrees Celsius in less than two minutes in the chamber. Uh, active heating is to prevent cracks and less deforming and warping. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Um, yes. So that is what active heating will do. So when you're printing ABS, ASA, it will keep the chamber temperature warmer so that the layers aren't cooling as rapidly, causing them to delaminate from each other. So like I generally, when I, I print a lot of ABS and ASA, but I yet generally bake my chambers, just heat up the bed and let the heat of the bed warm up the chamber. And I'll, I'll wait sometimes an hour of preheating before running the print, doing that to get my chamber temp. And generally, like my Bamboo X1, my chamber temp rarely gets over like 45 to 50 Celsius at the highest. Right now, we're at 47 degrees Celsius in three minutes on this thing. So, would you say Clipper is beginner friendly? No, I would not. Clipper is not beginner friendly. Um, it's just an advanced thing. There's a lot of dials you can mess with, basically. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can easily mess things up. So I, I think Clipper is not for beginners. Clipper is when you're ready to take the next step up. Learn, mate, just mess with your printer as is. And when you feel like maybe you've reached a limit, then it's time to start looking at Clipper, but it's, it's not for everybody. My 2.4 only with bed gets up to 60C. Cool. Uh, you can get 60C on your X1 with a blanket on the top. Huh, interesting. My, I insulated the glass on mine. Doesn't get over like 51, 52 at the highest. But my studio is also 73 degrees right now, so. It could be a never ending rabbit hole. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yeah, we're up to 50 degrees Celsius in four minutes. We're basically graining five Celsius per minute right now.
so many days of setting clipper and mainsail to get it right, but once I did, I was very happy. Yeah, I would agree with that. Kind of how it goes. Had one of the first gen pre design uh, X plus threes and it was not ideal. My X Max 3, I have the first design X Max 3, um, the, the original version, and it's been fine, but if it's 45C outside, getting, getting to 60 isn't hard. True. Do you have two fans under the bed to circulate hot air? I do on my 2.4. I have a Nevermore with two fans in it to circulate air out from underneath the bed into the chamber. My 2.4, so far, the highest chamber temp I've seen has been 45, but that wasn't a very long print. 52 Celsius in five and a half minutes. I can feel the heat radiating off this thing now. I can definitely feel the heat. I wonder if I start the part cooling, the uh, chamber. Oh, that's the chamber fan. I don't want that one. That was the chamber fan sucking heat out of the chamber. Not what I want. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. That is the, uh, I just turned on the fan, the internal part cooling fan to circulate air. I turn that down like halfway. Yeah, that actually lowered our temperature because it's circulating air. Not sure about this interface. Yeah, I don't like that they set the, the chamber temperature to hot. I, I'm sure I can go ahead and config and change that. Like, let's look. It's a silly uh, naming convention for sure. Let's look in the printer in the CFG. Where is it? Where is it? It's got to be here. Heater bed. Generic hater. Yeah, I could rename it. I'll rename it to chamber when we're done here. I'm waiting for a printer with built-in AC. They did a bunch of custom weird shit in their config. I... I been over the config before on the previous one I didn't have much problem with it there's some weirdness about the way they configed it but like macros and stuff their own custom macros are a little strange but eh, looks like we're hitting a limit at 54 C where it's taking a while now eight minutes in to get to 54 I don't know where the chamber thermistor is in this thing either. Is it in the PTC heater? Possibly. This top piece fits in here really tight. And it's like if one, one corner will pop up when you try to put another one in. Yeah, I don't see where the chamber thermistor is. Yeah, I mean, the bed could absolutely help. I just want to see what the chamber he heater will do on its own. 
Nah, do I know any coding? No. I really want to learn coding. Um, I was happy that Brilliant started to become a sponsor so I can take some of their coding classes. Because uh, at the moment, no, I don't know any coding. Well, we're at 55C in just under 10 minutes, which I wouldn't hit 55C on any of my other machines in the chamber temp in an hour. Like, it would take at least an hour of baking to reach this kind of temperature. And we're at 10 minutes to hit 55C from cool, from room temperature. So that's the benefit of a chamber heater. We've not only achieved temperature quickly, but it'll maintain temperature, so. All right, folks, this has gone longer than I wanted it to. We got a decent benchy out of this thing, a 15 minute, 15 second benchy. Let me change the scenes back here. Bloop. There we go. Um, yeah, so I think we have achieved what I was setting out to achieve with this. We got a print out of this thing. Uh, could you check what max chamber temp is set to? Sure. I will look in the config. I didn't take note of that when we were there. They say 65 in their marketing material, so I just assumed, but it might not be. Generic heater, hot. Ba, ba, ba. Max temp, 70. It's set to 70. Max chamber temp is set to 70. So, yeah. Uh, we're up to 57 Celsius now. So, all right, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, you hit overheat protection at 55. Yeah, now it's set to 70, so... I was running it at like 50 previously. I don't even, 65 is more than I need. Maybe if I'm printing nylon, I'd want it to go that high, but yeah. So, all right, folks, thank you very much. Initial impressions, they have absolutely improved over the initial revision of this machine. I'm glad to see that. The new version of the X-Max 3, version two, seems to have definitely made some good updates. Look for more on this machine in the future. I'm gonna be using it in at least a project video coming up and I'm sure I'll talk about it more as we go. So thank you all for being here. Thanks for joining in. This went way longer than I hoped it would, but that always happens, doesn't it? So thank you folks. I will catch you in the next one. The next one is Saturday. If you didn't catch it earlier, Saturday, I'm gonna be doing a massive unboxing of a bunch of printers. That one will probably go way, way longer than I hope it will, but here we go. Can't wait to see you insulate this. I'm sure I will. So, all right, folks, thank you for being here. Thank you for catching it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Lift with your knees when you move it. Yes, I know. Thank you, John. <laughs> See you, folks. Bye-bye.